Why here Kadimia? Season 7, episode 13. I have to get to UA Deku finally arrives. The flood of relief that washed over me. First wielder. Yeah? When he appeared. I have a bad feeling I just can't shake. About what? My brother. Among other things, like your friend. I just realized that Deku shows up just in time to see Miro's ass. The school bus is here, kid. We gotta get you back. Oh, they're picking him up. Grab all. <laughs> so cool. It's a ride on this fighter jet. I should be protecting the skies around you way instead of playing chauffeur right what now. What language are they speaking right now? We're counting on you. Does Deku speak English or do the American fighter jets speak Japanese? The American fighter pilots don't speak Japanese. Deku speaks English for Stars and Stripes. Yeah. Little sis bet on you guys. If you're really the one who inherited All Might's power, then prove it. <laughs> Deku took that very seriously. Sir! It was already there. Riding on the jets is not enough. He has to zigzag through them. Hey, you! Yeah, I can see it again! We're <laughs> saving the world with his ass. <laughs> Crying. <laughs> oh, damn. Those eyes, though. Izuku Midoriya. Shigaraki's so happy to see him, he allowed himself to take a rocket kick. Mirror just stays in that position for the duration of the battle. Reinstate the barrier! Yes! Good news! Midoriya's here! I'm sorry that is very good so news. Long. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Side by side. Oh, uh, no. Don't look at this. Don't look at anything. In my excitement, I, for <laughs> I forgot about this for a second. Stop it. This is such a key moment. Oh, they're okay. They're all right. Do you want to tell him why you're late? I'm sure you have an excuse. Oh. Go on. Avoid taking responsibility. Just like everybody else does. He wouldn't, though. Well, I think whatever power deck is hiding inside of him, we're about to see. Anger makes you predictable. When you attack, I'll sever your spine. He's underestimating Deku, though. We haven't lost yet, Deku! Him again. I know you're feeling super Oh, this is so perfect. Guided, Here's strong. the perfect man for this. We will win this. That's the mindset you need to battle with. We haven't lost a single yes. thing Thank that we've gained yet. And we're not giving up this fight. Oh my god. <laughs> I thought I couldn't like Mirio anymore. I thought it was impossible. My love for Mirio just goes plus ultra. There is an aspect of this that is purely tactical. If Deku's compromised, he's more easy to defeat. But then there's another aspect of it that's interpersonal. And for Mirio to be thinking about Deku in this moment to care about his soul, there's also just way too much at stake in this interaction, philosophically, for Deku to lose it. I think a lot of the biggest despair comes from feelings that one can't do anything. That this situation that is terrible is just what it is. Especially if it feels like that something is being imposed from outside. I think typically the less you feel you have to gain from doing hard work and doing things correctly, the less tactile grip you feel on your own life and any idea of a positive outcome for yourself, the greater the risk and atrocities you're willing to stomach for a dice roll and a better outcome. What do you have to lose? And when people's worldview and outlook is directed from a sense of pain and people who don't see things as changeable or don't see people as good or don't think it's possible to overcome and to succeed, what they'll use to establish credibility and what they very well might feel is that the only reason people are any different or feel any differently is because they haven't experienced the same depths of pain. There's a sort of seeking to establish authority based on depth of trauma. If Deku becomes reactive, overly violent, bloodthirsty, while it's perfectly understandable, it plays right into Shigaraki's philosophical hands as well. You're trying to fill his head with delusions. That's called delusions. running away from reality. Maybe you're you would see it that, that way. We are heroes. If we don't keep fighting and chasing our ideal futures, then who's going to make sure they become reality? That's the cru crucial difference right there. Mirio saving the world with his ass and then with his heart. In a way, this is one of the biggest things Deku has ever done or had to do. Yeah. I'm sorry. He's up for it. Save your apologies for after we've won this war, hero. Oh, Mirio just framed that whole thing so perfectly. Tell me, is Shigaraki still somewhere inside of that body? Wow, imagine thinking about that now. A chain of events across the ages. Now that is an interesting question. It's a very interesting question. All for one is the consciousness he's trying to keep him in there. Perhaps because he's been alive longer. 
And he set it up from the I beginning. I don't know what your plan is or how you intend to approach this fight, but don't think for a second that there's a happy ending for you. He's physically showing his insecurity by trying to hold it in with a hand over his heart. He just accidentally demonstrated his weakness. I said something kind of mean earlier and it was like another person reacted. <laughs> yeah, you don't have any friends, bro. I've got friends. I got my, my dog. Hey, you and Tolo said I was yeah. really nice. Billy. <laughs> Name one. Name one that isn't your dog. It was almost like he was possessed by someone else. It honestly yeah, didn't Muriel seem laid the totally groundwork to me. for this whole thing. You're gonna beat him psychologically. We came in here with all the all the U.S. states prepared for smashes, but it's gonna be United States of Psychology. He's still in there. Look. Whoa! What's going on? That move's not going to work twice. I think we're just ready for this. Once you use this, it's over. Uh, okay, yeah, what is this? In the next five minutes, the world will fall. No pressure, Deku. Second gear. What Third is happening? Gear. Whoa, what the heck? The ability to change a person's speed after touching them. Gear shift. That's really cool. And at this moment, Izuku Midoriya is exceeding his perceived limits. <laughs> looks so cool. He's operating at 120 percent. So powerful, I can't even see it. They're making this look easy right now, but that's not gonna last. They put so much into that sequence that felt like the end of the fight, but it's likely just the beginning. I mean, it's not gonna be that easy. He's not even really fighting all for one. He's fighting advanced body Shigaraki. What is He's this? He's crying. Your quirk has limits. It grew. It expanded. It only works on small objects. It's been improved. One for all is a collaborative thing. You had no real power. Well, you missed the point. Why can I see you now? It's cool phrasing. The one for all, all for one split is cool for so many reasons, and there's so many different ways to conceptualize it. I think it's an umbrella for a lot of different opposing forces. One of them is something like natural atrophy and decay versus compounding exponential expansion that occurs in spite of material difficulties, which I really enjoy thinking about and is one of the core elements of the beauty of humanity and existence to me, like that anything is possible at all. There's something like a corresponding outlook for the atrophy thing, which is that life is a zero-sum game. It's plus one, minus one, plus one, minus one all the time. And then the thinking is something like, well, if that is the case, that plus one might as well be me. I may as well just have it since they're suffering anyway since it's inevitable since nothing can be improved in terms of the suffering better them than me it's true that there are zero-sum elements to life and society things do pass from one hand to the other without expanding destruction is real things can go backwards you can end up with less than you started with and yet in spite of all that not only do things persist there's this repeated synthesis and growth over and over again that's echoed through many of the elements of the story one is the cast all being sort of this ensemble that are sort of singularly this greatest hero it might also be that one for all doesn't just stack powers one on top of the other but has a synthesis between them thinking about this now i mean i'm definitely not a power expert in the show clearly but it seems like generally all for one doesn't have as much of that element it's like i use this one and then i use this one and sometimes i use these two simultaneously but there's perhaps something like a lack of unity in the way he exercises his abilities it's like it's all me all the time whereas Deku literally has like spiritual conferences and is collaborating with his predecessors midoriya this is my eyes have been open for a really long time for the love of god somebody let me blink and a single punch can break the laws of reality itself Huge. Detroit it's, I mean, it's not the first time Deku's broken the laws of reality. Quintuple! His will single-handedly defeated fate. You're mine. Uh. <laughs> stopped himself midair. Sixth smoke screen. Cheap trick. It's all coming together. From above. And Deku just toying with him. It's crazy. Float gets me up into the air quickly. Allowing me to grab him with Black Whip while he's confused. Then, it's all when them. he's bound, I'll rely on the Fajin that I stored up during the Quintuple Smash earlier. <laughs> and go into gear shift. Oh. Just hit him, Deku. Hit him real hard. Yeah, it's clearly symbolic. When someone is given power, take a look at what they use it for. Or rather, who they use it for. Yeah, there's like this motivational backing there, too. What is it for? Quirks are nothing without the hero behind them. It's been clear for a long time. Your fight is over! So, how does this... What happens from here? Could it... Could it be it? 
that was less inspiring of a cut. Man, to be a witness to this. The deck was also just unrecognizable. There's an after effect. I believe Tomura is beyond redemption. So if you think he looked like he wanted to be saved, ask yourself. In the end, will you have the resolve necessary to kill him? It's so weird. It's almost a little bit backwards. Killing him is the easier part. Do you have the result to save him? When it would be so easy not to. Then of course the answer is yes. Remember your own will. You cannot be defeated yet. I just had a random thought. I mean, I don't know how they could possibly pull this off. If they really wanted to go hard all the way into it's not the quirk, and also it would bring it full circle. If Deku ends up being powerless, maybe as a result of this fallout, whatever it is, they said he had five minutes and still ends up winning. This is their fault. They raise right. their head in those brats with True. their underhanded methods. The arena's to blame too. What was he saying about making excuses, not taking a responsibility? Victory is still Oh, it's better when it be done. Yeah, like it wasn't gonna be that easy. Deku wasn't gonna show up mid-season and, you know, win by beating powerless, quirkless Shigaraki. I mean, the more I think about it, the more I think it probably will be something emotional, some heartfelt appeal. It's weird because people who have given up, who have a very cynical, dark outlook of the world, simultaneously need to be right about that and also deeply desire to be proven wrong. There are these conflicting forces because no matter what personal narratives we weave, we are human, we have desires. There is a natural instinctive guiding force towards growth and personal expectation and a radar for potential and one's position relative to their anticipated potential. And I don't think it would be controversial to anyone to say the best thing would be to engage with those things successfully and see your potential and live up to your potential and be fulfilled in your life to actually have agency over things that you can have agency over that do matter the most, which are probably things most close to yourself and your thoughts and your emotions and your actions. But that's also highly threatening because it's very difficult and it's painful. And growth in some ways is like a death because you have to let go of things that have kept you safe and your structure, your internal composition that at least your body internally feels like is keeping you alive and protected in order to be like vulnerable and meet things, meet new things. And if you're in this cycle of learned helplessness where you've either experienced pain enough times to be disincentivized from trying again or pain of a sufficient severity, it just looks too difficult, too daunting, not worth it. Hope is painful. Looking at your own desire is painful. Looking at what you'd actually have to do and what true responsibility for yourself would mean is just too overwhelming. So you end up in this weird conflicting situation where like even somebody with really good intentions who has insight, who cares about you, approaches you with lifelines, you will fight this person who is trying to give you something that actually you want. Also, I don't think this is a personality trait. It's like this person is this and this person is that. I think there are multiple elements of our lives in which we have varying different ranges of this. So there are ways that people are really growing and are expansive and are willing to cope with pain and embrace challenge. And there are other compartments where people are sort of hiding in the protective safety of the shadows and are very resistant to change. So there's plenty of times when people have offered me what probably was very sound, great advice in the name of helping me. But my reaction was anger because I wasn't willing to take on what that would mean. And in that way, became my own worst enemy. I think there are sort of trademark signs of this, including blaming something that isn't phrased this way, but essentially boils down to a curse. Like I was not born as one of the lucky ones or everything I touch turns to ash as sort of this intrinsic quality of myself. Over utilizing intellect, but in a very specific way towards a predetermined outcome. So whatever lifelines may appear can be attacked and stripped down by on the surface plausible arguments, but sort of lead to your defeat before the game has even begun. Blaming external factors, like we saw very directly here with Shigaraki, accusing Deku of and then doing himself. Which is not to say that external factors don't matter. It's just that external factors are not always the whole story. If we're setting the very general goal of being a realized human being in whatever way is specific to the individual. What some people will do in that case is they'll reframe the lens to define whatever that is, success, whatever you want to call it, in some very specific way where circumstances do play a role, which is questionable. There's also the tactic I mentioned earlier of something like an appeal to authority, but it reframes what authority means to be whoever has the strongest emotion or the worst experience. So it becomes a subjective thing where people can define the terms of evaluation based on what they say. So they always win the argument. And so of this endless pain Olympics, which of course, if I'm being real, if you actually shifted that lens and tried to make it more objective, it would fall apart immediately because the people I'm having these conversations with are, are not really people who are objectively in measurable terms at the worst end of the spectrum. I mean, they have food and live in functioning societies and are not being trafficked, are not living in death camps, etc, etc. But of course, pain is subjective, which is the whole point of reframing it that way. Anyway, it's so palpable, this struggle with Shigaraki and Deku, where Shigaraki is in there and he wants to be helped. If he didn't, it might feel differently. It might feel like, 
maybe the saving isn't really something important to consider. That might even be apparent if you try to compare Shigaraki with All for One. Or All for One, like, there's not as much emotional pull for me to see him save, though I still think it would be cool. Shigaraki is in there. He does want to see a better world. He wants to have faith. He wants to believe. He wants to be good, even if it's on some small, virtually invisible level. And so I actually think that will be the frontier of the final battle. <laughs>